Well, uh, te me tua tahi, unui kuroia ki te atua. Uh, ko mama rita waka, ko rā kautaputu maunga, ko hokianga te wainga nui, ko tapu wai te awa, ko ngā puhi me te raroa ngā iwi, ko ngai tūpoto te hapu, ko ngā huia te marae, ko Max Cup tu tōku ingo. Uh, e moi ana a hau a i Jillian, um, tōku hōranga tira, uh, kia puta uh, tai ki uh, Ariana uh, um, tō maua kōtero. So I'm from the Great North, um, uh, Ngā Pui Te Raroa, tribes, and um, the Hokianga is our harbour, um, like most Māoris from up north, from the Hokianga. And um, my wife is Jillian, and we have a daughter who's Ariana, and uh, yeah, well, she's such a blessing to us. Um, even though we're from the, the Great North, and my grandparents were fluent Māori speakers, um, they never taught uh, their daughter or their children, and so as the eldest in my family, I felt it was my responsibility to try and learn um, that part of our life as well, and learn some of those things. So. I was brought up in South Auckland in Manirewa, and um, from there I had the opportunity to leave school early because school wasn't really working and went to a, a hostel, part of um, the United Māori Mission, um, who were doing such a great work back in the 70s, 60s, 70s and 80s and in the early 80s I was able to go to Tiroro, which is a hostel in Owens Road in Epsom and it was there that Jesus found me and I was able to uh, learn about this man who loved me unconditionally and had a real passion for me and who I was and accepted me for the person that I was and was going to be as well. So. Yeah. So for the last, uh, well, the last nearly 30 years I've been involved with youth ministry. But the last 19 years have been the community pastor at Mount Wellington Community Church. And part of that has been um, yeah, just the role of being in the community, being part of it. And what, whatever aspect, so we live, we go to church, we've done our schooling, we've done everything, play sport, um, play for the, one of the local rugby clubs and um, involved in the life of our community. And... Um, so as part of that, uh, my wife Jillian and I, we run a um, youth group at our church and train up um, our young youth workers as well to, to be involved with the, the youth work that we're doing. And our passion is for our community, our neighbours, um, people in the schools that we're part of and the, the different sports clubs, etc. that we're involved with as well. So, yeah, that's the sort of thing that we do. Mm. I think the positive side is it's just me. It's who I am. I, I am a Christian with a with a Māori flavour, and um, it's quite a nice flavour. And um, that's just the person that I am. And I suppose growing up, um, I started in a in a in a Māori hostel, so I had that kind of foundation, and then went to um, a church who had a heart for me and who I was at Nairiev and um, gave me opportunities to serve and to be involved in, in ministry and help to develop me into the person that I am now and um, the person I'm going to be in the future as well. And so I had opportunities to, um, to, to be who I am. And some of it has been a little bit of a struggle because when you are part of a, a, a church that is predominantly Pākehā, then you have a particular form and a, a more traditional brethren church to start with um, can um, bring those particular connotations as well. So as a Māori, you um, can struggle to to be yourself in, in, in that flavour because other people don't connect with it as, as much as you would like them to. And the temptation is to, to move and try and connect with similar people and be involved with um, with them and who they are and um, get taken away. But one of the things I really believed and felt was that um, God 
puts me in a particular place. He puts us all in particular places. And it's up to us to be able to adapt and to be part of that. Because if I go or if someone else goes, then that faith community loses that blessing of that person. And I'm not saying that um, to have me is the most amazing blessing. But what I bring contributes to what everyone else brings as well. And for me to be able to bring that little bit of um, that, that Māori flavour, that te ao Māori, the, the Māori way of thinking, um, I think is, is important. And um, to be able to do that, um, as long as I did um, at Nairi Ave for the, the 17 or so years that we were there for, um, until God said it's now time for you to go and be involved here at Mount Wellington Community Church, um, then to move there and to be able to do the same thing is has been really good and and one of the things and i know that um some people felt it a bit um awkward to start with because when we moved from nairi to uh, mount wellington uh, we had a big porphyry we had a welcome and some people thought this is going to be pretty freaky um because it's going to be all about maori it's going to be um i don't know if i want to be part of this um going to be a bit scared of it but over the years as they saw um, who I was and my heart for um, for people and my heart for um, being authentic Christians and developing in who God has made you and what God has made you, then um, they started to be a lot more comfortable with um, with me, I suppose. So. I think one of the things that is difficult is is that it's difficult to articulate um, something you naturally do and you naturally are and often it's easier for people I suppose on the outside or, or who are not you to be able to say this is what it is this is what I see this is how I see you do what you're doing and this is how I see you be who you are um, so yeah that that is a difficult question I suppose what um, Christ requires of us is to to be ourselves and to worship him in the way that he has placed inside us and um, whatever that is. And sometimes that can feel awkward or look awkward or because it may be different to the way that um, we would want to do it. Um, that doesn't make it wrong. Um, it doesn't make it more right either. It just says this is... The way that you need to do that and um, I think an issue can be when I see someone doing something different to how I would do it for me to think I need to correct them or um, this is hindering me being able to worship and so um, for me <clears throat> as a well more difficult to say young Māori now but uh, for me as a as a, a Māori young man and then growing and developing there was just a sense that um, emotion and that outpouring of wairua that the spirit of myself connecting with the spirit of God was important and the way that that came out would um change and be different and and i think that anyone who's been to a few different countries know that there are different um people groups ethnicities around the world that say things better than anyone else like we use the word aroha and for us as new zealanders we know aroha is more than just the word love it's the whole essence of love. And, and even for Pākehā, for European um, New Zealanders, we will use aroha. Mana is another word. Um, and there are other words around the world that we use to... We use a lot of Latin and French because we feel that that, that says something better than we can say it. And it's the same with um, some of the things that we use um, in the church as well in um, today. And I think... Um, yeah, I suppose it'd be good to give a shout out to people like Luke, Carb, Morgan and Tirotini who are more modern, bringing in modern Māori songs that are uh, uh, allowing New Zealanders to worship 
um, bilingually. So both in, in Pākehā and in Māori and um, have that authenticity around it and being able to do it in that way. Uh, one of the things uh, I think is really important, and this is just 101 basic um, crossing, crossing the, <laughs> the aisle, the road, whatever it might be, um, to be able to connect better with people, especially with Māori. And one thing, and I, I don't think we take this serious enough, and um, which is um, pronunciation. I think it's huge. I think pronunciation of people's names, of place names, are really important. Because um, as a Māori, when I hear someone say a place name and it is wrong, it, it's like they're yelling it at me, yelling it in my face. And I'm like, it's actually not that hard to say. Māori isn't difficult. The, the vowels are easy. R, E, E, O, U. If you can do that, you can pronounce pretty much any Māori word. And I think we make it really difficult. And what can be even more difficult is um, we can get caught up in, we've always said it like this. That's just the way I was, I was taught. Um, I've always said it like this, so either that means I will always say it like this, or um, that's the right way to say it. Um, sometimes we can look back in our history and we can see that, whoops, we've done it wrong for this long, it's time to get it right. And, and I think that something as simple as language, as pronunciation, is a huge step forward. And people can tell the difference. We lived in Kenya for a little while. And one of the things that um, drew a lot of the local people to us was that when we said words in Kiswahili or in Kalenjin or Kikuyu or in Maasai, we pronounced it fairly well, so well that they would call us whatever their tribe was because they felt drawn to us because we t made an effort to speak their language properly. And... One of the things that can be uncomfortable for some Pākehā who try to do it properly um, is that when Māori don't say things properly, they don't pronounce things properly. So things like Māori who say Māori, because uh, uh, the, the Māori is down the road. So we feel a little bit nervous because they're not saying it. So who am I as a Pākehā to say uh, to kofata? When everyone's saying tikwara or, you know, to say taupo, because it sounds a little bit funny, taupo, whoa, whoa. Um, instead of saying taupo, um, things like that. Um, <clears throat> but that's on them. We don't need to worry about that. We need to worry about ourselves and say, okay, this is what I need to do to, um, to, to cross the bridge, to make that effort and to show that... Um, I'm interested and I have that aroha that I'm talking about for other people is to make that effort to to say it properly. And I can tell the difference usually between someone who tries to um, <clears throat> say something like rangiriri, um, which is quite hard because it has three R's and R's are hard to roll, um, saying something like that when um, with someone who struggles to say the word correctly um, than someone who doesn't even want to try. And, and that's the difference. And, and I think one of the things as Māori, and it's not only Māori, but this is what we're talking about now, is we have a sense of wairua. It's that spirit. And, and it's the wairua that connects. And as Christians, we should understand that because the Holy Spirit is the one that connects us, connects our spirit to other Christians and, um, and to the Holy Spirit, obviously, as well. And so... When I can get that sense that someone is making the effort, I know, I feel it. And in, and in fact, you get emotional about it, that someone is, is making the effort and wanting to, to be different or not be different, to be the same, so to speak. Um, and, and, you, and you can tell that. And I can't explain how you can tell it. You just do. Mm. You just know. Mm. I think that as especially when you go through the Old Testament and then you and and, you, and you're coming into the New Testament, there's been kind of um, 
flippant remarks or jokes even that uh, Māori are the lost tribe, you know, of Israel that kind of sense that the way that we do things are similar to what how the Jews do things. And so when we read things in the Old Testament about, about hygiene, about um, relationships, about connection, about... Um, being set apart and all those sort of things that's what we do when i when i was studying the bible um as a as a young man and i was reading through some of those things i thought it wasn't foreign it wasn't foreign to me the things that i was reading because yeah i understand that that's what we do that's how we do it and um so you felt that connection across thousands of years with these are the sorts of things that we would do and um, this is what my grandparents did and how my grandparents did it and they weren't necessarily um, followers of Christ but they, as part of who they were, they were doing the same sort of thing. So for me, it was easy to connect in with a lot of those things because, because it was kind of naturally who we were. And, and partly, I think that's partly why um, Māori connected so quickly to the missionaries when they first came uh, especially the ones that um, took that next step into to learning language and to to being part of um, a hapu uh, a sub tribe and um, get, being part of whanau is that and they connected and the gospel spread so fast because the concepts weren't foreign apart from I think um, <clears throat> something that would stick out for people is um, don't only do Christian Māori songs around Waitangi and don't ask Māori to do Waitangi services. Um, I mean, if they want to, that's fine, but it's like, it's not the only service we can do. You know, it's not the only time that we can, we can be Māori is on the 6th of February or around that date. Um, and then go, oh, what's that Māori song that we can do um, around that time? Because because that's that's what it's about. But <clears throat> I think to be a truly bicultural society, and I, and I believe that multiculturalism comes off the foundation of biculturalism. I think one of the things that, and this is my, uh, my own whakaaro, my own thoughts, is we need to get away from... Um, this is the Māori stuff we need to do and this is the other stuff we do because um, this is the way we do things here. So at Mount Wellington Community Church, we have particular ways we do things um, and it's just normal. This, this is just the way we do things. And it may have Māori in it. It may have Māori con um, particular things. It may have um, songs that are in Māori. It may have um, different welcomes depending on who comes in etc and it's not like oh we need to do the Māori welcome or the Māori song because this is happening it's just like here are some songs we're doing and there are Māori songs that are part of it it's just our normal worship and I think if we can show that um, this is us this is who we are this is the, the, the sort of people we are and it doesn't necessarily have to just be um, songs in Māori um, it can be songs that have rhythm you know, it can be songs that 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 are that are kind of like R and B. You know, that kind of um, that sort of stuff. I'm not saying that's. I'm not trying to say these are all Māori people, but kind of you know, there are some sort of songs you go, bro, this is white ass. This is like, what is this? What are we doing? Uh, these are written for females. Why are we singing these sort of songs? Um, and I'm not saying we we shouldn't have all of them. We should, but um, you know, it just there needs to be a bit of. Uh, bit of flow happening with uh, with what's going on so that when you walk in you you have that sense of that wairua that um, it's all encompassing everyone is welcome everyone can come in and feel welcome and we may not necessarily uh, make a point of something but you just know because you can you, you can sense what's happening around and um and i've been into into several churches where you go in and you just you you, you feel that welcome sense and and if we can get away from, um, and I know this used to happen to me quite a bit, different churches I was involved in, um, a Māori walks in the door and you send the Māori to go and welcome them. You know, it's like, 
a lot of guys just come. Can you go say hello? Like, Bro, why don't you go say hello? You know, I don't need to be the person to go and welcome that person. People from around the world are coming here because they have a sense that we are a country that gets on. We have a country that um, wants to be different to the rest of the world, and they're drawn to that. And so we're seeing that in the secular world a lot more. We're seeing businesses asking people to come in and teach people to be able to mihi, teach people about um, Māori concepts, doing Māori blessings for buildings, for um, teaching waiata, um, doing all these sorts of things. This is the secular world. They're asking, businesses are asking people to come in and to teach Māori concepts to their employees. For some reason, the church used to be at the forefront of that. We're not. We're not at the forefront of it anymore. And we need to get back to that. We need to say, this is us here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. This is how we do it. Now, I can't say how each different church does it. That's a conversation you have to have with the people in your church. I think that there are some things um, that we need to do. And I think um, we're seeing it on the news and we're hearing a lot of people saying, you know, we're seeing on TV, oh, they're seeing a lot of marriage stuff now on TV and they're always doing these welcomes and they're saying place names different and all these sorts of things. I didn't know there was a, a married name for that place. I thought, you know, I don't know about Ototahi. Why did they change the name? Well, actually, they didn't change the name. That is the name, but then it got changed. To, to something else, Kirikiriroa, what, what's Kirikiriroa, where is that? Well, it's always been Kirikiriroa, but then this guy named Hamilton came along and they changed it to him. And so there are all these different things that we need to know about the history of where we are and be able to acknowledge that somehow, I don't know what that looks like, um, but also to be able to um, be willing to be open to things of the mighty world. And um, I'm, not, I'm not talking about evil. I'm not talking about things that are wrong because there's evil in all societies. There's evil in all cultures and ethnicities. And we're told to leave that behind. But there's also good as well. There's good in all of those um, all of those people groups. And, and there's a lot of good in Māori. And there's a lot of good in the Pākehā that are here and all the other ethnicities that are coming in, even Australian they're coming in as well and there's good in, the, in them too and so for us to be able to to take that good and to to put it together and worship god and praise the lord and praise and worship and honor and bring glory to god through whatever that is however that we do it and it can't just be pakia it can't just be the normal form that we've always done it um we've got to mix that up and have that sense that it's important it's an important thing for us to do because we're in new zealand and, and there's that sense that we're we're on the journey together mm. you know this is our journey this is this is how we're doing it and so when the next person comes in it's easier for them to get on the waka because there's familiarities for them Morera. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kia ona tātou tātou. Thanks, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> awesome.